welcome to the first episode of this podcast. My name is Melanie and I live in Harlem in the Netherlands. And uh, I'm a mum and a knitter and a programmer. And um, I have been knitting for a very long time um, and have recently started uh, adding uh, yarn dyeing to sort of my list of hobbies. And um, I just thought it would be a good idea to start kind of like a podcast so I can sort of track my progress and um, yeah, just also kind of feel more connected to the knitting world. It feels really, really weird sitting in a room talking to yourself to your phone, but oh well. Um, I'm drinking tea because I am half British. That is what we do. I do drink a ton of coffee, by the way, but um, I've made a little list of stuff to talk about, so <laughs> to make it less awkward, but I don't think that's working. Um, so how long have I been knitting? I've been knitting for, I think as long as I can remember. When I was a kid, like both my, like my mum has knitted, she's more of a crocheter right now. Um, and both my grandmas knit, my Dutch grandma and my British grandma. Uh, and they were both pretty active with that. Um, and I'm pretty sure they both like tried to teach me. I think I got most of it from my mum. And then I kind of didn't do it for a long time. And then when I was in college, I started knitting again because it sort of like started getting popular again. Um, but I knit with like cheap acrylics for a very, very long time. And I would have like these big uh, scarves that were just like really boring, straight up and down, nothing gray scarves. But, you know, I, I think I just enjoyed the motion more than anything else. Um, and um, sort of for me, like the, the turning point came when I started working for a uh, promotional company that d does um, like events, like consumer events and um, things like that. And one of their events was... Uh, a craft show and I was in charge of their marketing and it was so amazing because finally you know I didn't have like many days to work on it in a week I had many other events that I did um, marketing for but um, I really enjoyed this particular event because for me it was like oh it's like my hobbies and my work are suddenly like one one thing and so um, I'm, I'm talking a little bit fast because it's quite late in the afternoon and I'm trying to sort of like beat, um, beat it getting dark and I don't think <laughs> we'll make it because it's almost like we're almost losing daylight but okay never mind. Um, and so one year uh, one of the uh, sort of like guests of the event were Arne and Carlos and if you know them they're like a famous Norwegian knitting duo and they came out that year with their uh, knitting Christmas balls book and I just love that I thought that's so fun and they're so cute and adorable and I want to learn how to knit that but I didn't do or had never done like stranded color work I had never done knitting in the round on like circular needles or like a DPNs so I was like, okay, it's just two things I kind of have to master. And I, I, it's just one of those things that I really, really wanted to do. And so I just looked it up on YouTube for hours and hours and hours. And then, you know, you start with just doing circulars, just doing like the balls, but then for, um, uh, yeah, just one color. And then when I got that down, I, I started adding the color. And I have like so many of them now. It is ridiculous, but it's like 
one of my favorite things to knit. Um, hang on. Let me just show you like the official official ones that are in the in the book. It's just so so cute and I can never wait for it to like be Christmas because then I can get a Christmas tree and put them up. Look how cute is that? So and after a while I kinda got tired of like the really like traditional sort of like Norwegian patterns and I started making up these like weird like a coffee it's a coffee pot. What else have I got? Like a ruby. Um, like a, this is like a peacock's feather, but weird. Little sandcastle. And it's just things that I drew on like graph paper and just, you know, added to that. So I think from like starting with something that I really wanted to make and because it's I mean they're quite small they're quite manageable um and they're quite addictive knit so I kept making them over and over and over again I've given away a couple as well but I you know, like to keep them so uh yeah do you have any others this one this one's from the book but it's in it cute And um, because it's so small and it's like you just can knit them like on the go blah 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 you know it's I think it's like a better kind of starter project than socks because it's such an instant gratification you know it's if you're particularly slow it's less than a week and then you're done with it and then you you have something that's quite cute and small and adorable but um, yeah so I've kind of graduated uh, from that and into sock knitting and I've done quite a couple of socks and uh, I've done quite a few shawls I finished um, the find your fade shawl I've done like the uh, Andrea Murray um, Marley shawl um, I'm kind of like looking for a short pattern that I want to do next but I'm not sure I, I, I've kind of got like Andrea Murray Stephen West fatigue that I just I, I don't want to knit one of their patterns I want to knit something different that not everybody else is knitting but then I also see what people are knitting in podcasts and it's like oh my god this I want to make it too. I want to make that too. So I've been looking at the girl from the grocery shawl, store shawl uh, by Hohi Locatelli. And it's like, everybody is making that thing. But it's really cute. I don't know. I should do like a deep dive into Ravelry and see if I can't find something that's, I don't know. From a, from a, like a designer who's just not selling as many uh, many patterns as the big designers are. I kind of feel like I should should start there and then when I can't find anything I can you know always go back to like a big 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 designer. Um, so so recently I started doing uh, some some dyeing and I have like a couple of I won't show everything because it'll take forever. Um, but because I'm a programmer, computer programmer, so uh, I like to sort of like be inspired by all my sort of like tech things. Um, so the, the the yarn names have like a sort of like techie background. This is um, debugging, and it's a like sparkly Stellina. It's really fun. Like I like love these colors and then this color is um, raspberry pi uh, from from the mini like computers this is like a, a, a really soft merino bamboo sport weight and then this is also like a Stellina I love this color 
and I've done this is a um, blue face Leicester stock yarn oh my nail polish is terrible don't look at that um, <laughs> I know my sister loves this type of color this is a headless unicorn so I've got a couple more, but I'll show those next time, if there's a next time. Um, so, um, I, I think I'll start with uh, finished objects, because I only have one. And that's this sweater. It is the um, Tin Can Knits uh, flax sweater, um, and it's for my son, who is very small, as you can see. And I, I dyed the yarn myself for this, so I'm really proud. It's uh, it's an alpaca though, so I'm, I don't know, I think it might be a little bit too warm for him, but I don't know. I really love like these sleeves. I think it, it makes it look quite smart. Um, so after, whips I guess because I mean I guess I could show you like everything that I have ever knit and it would like count as a finished object but I don't know like I finished my find your fade like almost a month and a half ago so maybe I'll put in a picture but I'm not going to show it it's also because I knit it from uh, single ply merinos and although I like mer like single ply like when it's on the skein and how it knits up but then when you wear it I feel it gets really fuzzy very pilly really really quickly I don't know I just I wish I'd knit it from something that would have been a bit more hard wearing because I'm always kind of worried every time I wear that shawl now that oh you know every time I wear it it'll make make it more pilly and fuzzy and like sort of like less nice to look at so I don't know I'm not really on board the single ply train anymore I guess anyway so this is my bag how cute is this pin It says, nothing better than sweater weather. I have a couple. Oh, it's a purple one. I have a pink one as well. And uh, it's from a, a Dutch uh, pin maker in Rotterdam. I think her work is adorable. Um, so in my bag, I have something I've been working on. This is the pumpkin spice mitt from Skein Deer Knits. So this one's missing its thumb. And this is the other one. I'm still working on it. How cute is that? I love these. I think they're adorable. I think they'll be extremely warm. Um, I had a lot of problems getting gauge for this project because I have really, really big hands. So to get like a proper fitting glove or mitten with fingering weight I had to like go up a needle size like really go up and it was just not getting like a nice dense fabric so I thought you know what so I, I tried like twice and I just didn't like the look of it at all and I thought this is you know, it's either like really tight, not really nice fitting, or it's going to be, the needles are gonna be so big that the sort of fabric that it creates is gonna to be too loose and not very warm. So in the end, I just went with um, a DK. So I'm using a DK, um, even though the pattern calls for fingering, fingering weight, but I just thought, well, I just have big hands for a girl so it's a problem and um, I'm knitting them on 2.75 millimeter 
high high sharps and I don't know what that is in US size but it's 2.75 millimeters uh, and it's like the, the fabric it's it's quite dense and it's so it's really warm and nice and I think these all yeah will be brilliant for uh, the colder weather that we've been having so I should really finish them but okay uh, something else that I've been knitting on are these socks. They're almost done. It's like oh, just another smidge. But I, I've done like a chevron pearl bump sort of thing. It, I didn't really follow a pattern. I just thought I'll just do that. Um, I didn't really even like it very much in the beginning, but I just kept going because I thought I just want to finish these socks because uh, it's um, This is uh, from Katia uh, This is the color lot if you, and, the, and the price if you are interested um, So sorry about my nail polish um, I just want to finish this. This is just like a, a some yarn that I've had for a long time, but so what happens is sometimes I'll just walk into a yarn store and because <laughs> because I want to keep like yarn businesses afloat, I'll just buy some sock yarn even if I don't really want it. <laughs> But I feel like I should support their business even if they have nothing that I want um, so and then you kind of get home I mean it's nice it's just not super fun amazing but it is not I mean it's a nice self-striving yarn and I'll definitely wear these because the Cartier ones it's it's good a good wearing sock um, I mean, and they're quite fun, but I'm definitely um, using some of my own yarn after this because I want a bit more speckles and stuff like that. Um, oh yes, and then the, the last thing that I'm knitting on, and so, so like my idea is, I am allowed to have two projects, um, a sock that can sort of like go in my backpack. Um, cause I travel to work with the bus every day. So something that I can like knit on in the bus, um, you know, don't have to look, I can kind of look out the window and mindlessly knit on. And then one sort of like bigger project from the couch in the evenings at home. Sort of like, this is the plan. And then this happens. I think you just start as many projects as that you have project bags. So if you want to limit the number of things you cast on, just stop buying bags. But you know, that's me. Um, where was it? Here we go. So I've started. This is terrible. Like um, the cozy memory blankets, but then like in mini, mini shapes and just some different types of yarn that I had left because so so I have very big hands but surprisingly my feet are not that big I'm a tall person I mean I am Dutch I am tall for a female I guess um and I have big hands but my feet are only size 40 which is I don't know other numbers in other countries and so when I knit socks for myself I end up with still quite a bit left and sometimes I'll knit socks for my son with that but <laughs> most of the time it just ends up in a bag somewhere in the, in my cupboards um, so I think this is a good idea but I think this is too small and I think it's like surprisingly each square takes a long time and I don't know 
I like it, but I think I should like rip it out and start again. Make bigger squares. I mean, obviously they'll take longer, but I think like in the end, the, the end result will be nicer. So I might be doing that. Um, but yeah, and I just have like lots of like minis I can use for that. I just have like tons of like these things and it's just like things that are left from different projects. So I do want to have like a, a memory blanket on the go to sort of like finish up all that yarn. So I think it's, it's like, it, I know it breaks my rule of having like a bigger project and a sock project. But I think since it's like eating all the rest yarn, it's a, it's a, it's an okay third project back. So maybe my rule of two, two projects is now the three project rule. Um, so that shows you how I live my life as an adult. I make rules for myself and don't stick by them. Um, yeah, so this is only a very short episode because uh, this is the first time and I'm kind of still figuring this out. Um, so that's it. Speaking of December, I am not doing any gift knitting. Like, not even the I'm not doing gift knitting, but I'm knitting this person and that person a hat and socks and mittens. No, no, like no gift knitting at all and there's no rhyme or reason it's just how it works out this year so for some reason everybody's doing secret santa and i'm only buying like two three presents who knew christmas could be this easy i am so relaxed it is insane i can recommend every family do secret santa under no gift knitting rule Um, okay, so that was the really, really end of this podcast. I hope to do another one really soon. I hope to have some more finished objects. I really hope these these guys will be done. Just a stupid thumb. I don't like doing it. It's like one of those things you don't... You just... You're knitting and then it's almost done. Like, almost... And you just kind of leave it like, I don't want to work on it anymore. I I have had things where I'd, in my cupboard, would have four pairs of socks. And the only thing that would that I would need to do is, like, bind them off. Weave in the ends. Like, the last 0.9% of a project. And it would take months. Months. The good thing is that when you do start doing it, you can like finish five projects in one day because it's no work at all. But I wonder why that is. Does it say something about my personality? I'm not sure. I'll think about it. Okay, anyway, thank you all for watching and hopefully see you again next time. Bye!